Um, I have on the viewport here half of the original demo game off to the left, and then this is all blank over here on the right because I'm imagining that's where my new level moves into. And this column of green that came with the game, I want to use that as my transition area, the tunnel that kind of leads you to my level. So I'm going to have to get into the tile map here. I've selected it from the main. I push the pencil button, and I have an eraser. I'm going to blast through the wall here so that my player character, when they get here, can actually navigate into this new area. And then I'm just going to take a second here and use the tiles I have, letting go of the eraser, and I'm going to design out this little area, just, just frame out the area I want to use. <laughs> Uh, what I want to do is make a new scene separate from this main scene. I want to contain my building of my platform in its own scene because the power of that is I'll be able to save it as its own file and all the little nodes and building blocks that I use and the features that I put into it will be saved in that file and I can then just reuse it over and over again in my game. And for a genre like this, you're probably going to use platforms a lot, so I'd like to make it its own scene. To do that, I go up to the top left where the word scene is written. I click that and I click new scene. Now I have this blank viewport area and this new empty tab here. And it's asking me how I want to start. So it's asking me what do I want to use for a root node or a parent node. I'm going to click other node for that. And I'm going to begin to type, I shouldn't have to finish, yep, animatable body 2D. That's going to give the platform the ability to move around, but also to be able to interact with your player. So I'm going to hit create. So with that node selected, I'm going to hit plus, And I already have them under recent, but you could search for them. I'm going to use sprite 2D. That will be for the image or what we see as the platform, the picture. And then, whoops, select animatable body again. And now I'm going to use the collision shape node to do just that and give us a shape for other things to collide with the platform. OK, so let's first choose a shape that goes with our collision shape node. Over here in the inspector, it says empty. I'm going to click that, and I'm going to select rectangle. I'm going to go to sprite 2D node, and where it says texture empty for sprite 2D, I actually want to reuse an image that comes from the demo game. So I'm going to select the down arrow, and I'm going to choose that quick load option that I've shown you before. And that's just here in the menu at the bottom. And when I select quick load, I have all the different images that are in the files in the game. And I'm just going to pick one of the tile sets from the tile map. And what it's showing me is all the different tiles, which I don't want. I just want to select like this right here, for example, as our platform. So we can do that, even though the image has a bunch of pictures in it. We can go over here to the texture. And where it says region, we can click enable. And then we cl click on edit region. And what we can do now is just zoom in and get exactly a box around the part of this big picture that we want. Okay, I've got it just around this one platform. I'm going to hit close, and now we have our picture. Our collision shape needs to be bigger. Awesome. Okay, Sprite 2D is good. Collision shape's good. Now we can save this again. Okay, so I want to put this platform scene into the main scene. But before I do that, notice what I did here in the top node. I right-clicked and renamed it so that it actually had the same name as the file type. And when I drag it into my main scene over here, I can recognize what that is that I'm, I'm using in all these other nodes and scenes. So I have the file down here, and I'm going to click and drag it onto my main uh, scene here in the viewport, just above the green. And you can see there it is, Platform 2 in the scene tree. Uh, notice I had to get rid of some of the green because we couldn't see the platform, which was also green in this example. Okay, with that platform still selected in the main scene tree, I'm going to go up to the plus and I'm going to add an animation player node. Now, on the bottom here, you can see I have this animation button and this empty section here. Okay, but let's move my camera out of the way here so I can show you a little clearer down here on the bottom. With that animation section that's blank, I can click on the word animation, select new, and I'm going to call this new animation left-right movement, and I'm going to hit OK. Now it's not blank. I have this timeline here that I can adjust. Over here on the right, it's currently set to only be a one second long animation, but I can, I can set it for two if I want this to go a little bit longer. 
And what I can do is I can add tracks for different things that I want to animate. In this case, I just want to animate the position of the platform to be different at different times. So I'm going to hit Add Track, Property Track. I'm going to select the platform that I want to animate here from the scene tree. And then I'm going to pick, I scroll down to this Position Animation Track under Node 2D. Now you can see I have this whole track ready to set up. If I click on the word uh, platform, sorry, you have under transform here, the word transform, all these different keys that you can use that you, you wouldn't have used before necessarily, but what you can do is you can drag this platform to a place you want it to be at a certain time, hit the key, and it's like a save point where the program will remember that that's where it should be in that animation. So let's try it out. So right now this blue line is indicating the zero second mark, the beginning of the animation. And I'd like the platform to be just where it is now. That's why I put it along the side wall. So I'm going to hit the key. And you get this little tiny icon here that is like a save point, remembering that that's where the platform should be. But if I were to take this blue line and drag it to the uh, two second mark all the way at the end, where do I want the platform to be after two seconds? Well, I'm going to highlight the platform. I'm going to left click and then hold shift and I'm going to move the platform over to the left. And the reason I held down shift is because without doing that, uh, I might accidentally move the platform just a little bit above or below where it was. And I only wanted it to move left, right. So at the two second mark here, I have it on the other side against the other wall. I've got it just how I want it. Now I'm going to hit the keyframe. There we go. And now I have that. Let's hit play on this animation right here and watch. Awesome. Now I just want it to bounce back. So if I go over to the right hand side with platform position track uh, selected here, I have this button that says animation looping. And if I press it once and then again, I will get this action right here where it goes back. If I only pressed it once, it would keep resetting. But this is having it bounce back and forth for us. Uh, the other thing I want to add is for this animation is I don't want it to be triggered by any event. I just want it running the entire time. So when the player arrives, that platform is moving automatically. And there's a button right here that says auto play on load. So when the main scene loads of our game, when we hit play, this platform should already be running. So I'm going to hit that now. Let's take a look at how this looks. And if you wanted, you could add a bunch of extra tracks to the single animation or create new ones here. Like I created a left, right spin, and this has both a position track and rotation. So if I click on the platform too, I've been messing with the rotation keyframes as well in the same four seconds as the uh, position track on this one. So if I hit play, it rotates and bounces back and forth. Increase difficulty.